let's get started. Today's topic, productivity in HSM. Tim Paul, it's over to you. All right, thanks, Derek. Um, I was going to jump into, uh, there's a five-axis part set up on a Raptor uh, dovetail vise. Um, I was just going to kind of quickly run through how I would program that, assuming I had a, a template set up. So we're going to show you how to use a template. We'll go back, remind you how to save a template, and uh, it'll kind of show you the, the power of, of a template. We're going to do a quick pattern and, uh, and go from there with some questions. So uh, with that said, I'm just going to jump into it. So real quick overview of the job. Uh, we have this, this job already set up. We have a part inside the part. Uh, we define the stock by a solid body. You can see that it, we already have the dovetail there. Uh, we did include our fixtures, and um, that's pretty simple. So uh, to jump into programming it, um, I'm going to face the top of this. I'm going to rough out the inside. I'm going to finish the inside, and then I'm going to go around and do something similar for the, um, for the outside. So I'm going to start by using a template that I just created, and that's going to be a, a face, a 2D adaptive, and a 3D, con I mean a 2D contour. So I'm going to choose all of those. Uh, with the face, because I have everything set up uh, the way I would normally face something, all I have to do is hit generate, and I quickly face that. So later on, uh, if we have time, I'll show you what happens if we just change the definition of the stock. So right now we have a rough pass and a finish pass. So uh, with the rough, all we should have to do is grab the geometry and same thing with the contour. Uh, we'll get in there and grab the geometry. So real quickly, we face, we roughed, we finish. So now I want to move over to the side here and I want to apply basically the same thing. I want to take a face mill and I want to, I want to face off this flat and then I want to rough it and then I want to finish it. Then I want to go in and tap, uh, spot drill, drill and tap these, these uh, 256 holes. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to right click in this gray space, create from template. I'm going to use this uh, template I already created. Uh, my last job when I was at L3, I had a pretty good list of templates. Anytime I find myself doing something um, really more than just a few times, uh, I create a template so I don't have to um, I don't have to think about it. I just jump in there. It's exactly how I want to do everything, and I and I move on. So um, keep that in mind whenever you find that you're doing a repetitive, you know, handful of steps. Uh, create create a template. So in this case, I'm going to create another template. Uh, I do have to uh, define the tool orientation uh, so it knows to look at it from that side. I'm going to hit OK. And if um, you can see it, uh, it's, it's roughing it, uh, facing it that way. Um, we can come in here and change that to 90 degrees. So we fix that. I'm actually going to uh, hit Control D to duplicate that facing operation because I want to use a face mill to, to face off that section there, that little corner. So I'm going to come in there. I'm going to reset the tool orientation. And for this, I don't want it to look at all the stock. I just want it to look at, at that right there. I'm not going to mess with the, um, the angle until I see what I get. Uh, but I don't want it to go all the way up to what the stock was. I want it to go from the model top and do only only look at like say 250,000, say 200,000 above that. So uh, that's face operation I'm happy with. So we got that face and that face. Now we just need to get in there and rough out that pocket. So uh, right click at it. Go to the uh, geometry tab. We're going to set the tool orientation to here. And we're going to set the geometry to this top top surface. I actually want to cut on the other one. I had it cutting past 10 thou. On this, I wanted to cut past the top three quarters of an inch. I'm going to hit OK. Um, so that's about what I want there. I'm going to do the same thing for this contour. Uh, set my tool orientation. So this is going to handle the the all the five axis you know positioning. I'm going to grab the geometry, 
and I'm going to set the depth to negative 750. Um, so that's it's a pretty quick way to kind of get through it. Uh, we're going to end up patterning that around, um, but what I want to do in that same pattern, so I don't have a bunch of pattern folders, uh, I'm going to tap all these and then come back up and tap that. So I'll show you how I would do that. Now I have a template set up. Uh, if you've watched uh, some of our other videos, I went through how to how I set up my uh, tapping um, templates. So I'm going to use this 256. So I'm going to spot drill, drill and tap with a two and a half lead tap. So create all templates. So with that, I'm going to right click and edit. And I do have to set the tool orientation on this. So set it to there. Grab that geometry there, and I'm going to tap same diameter, so it's going to hit all those at the same time. So with that, I'm going to take that geometry, and I want to just drag it down to here, and I'm going to drag it down to there. So uh, that quickly, you know, that shift hold drag the geometry is a pretty awesome tip. That's uh, not in Inventor HSM yet, but it's real high on the list. So keep an eye out for that if you're on uh, using Inventor HSM. So then I want to take uh, my spot drill, and I just want to do this one corner because it's going to pattern it around. So I'm going to take my spot drill, do Control-D for duplicate, right-click and edit. And in this tab, I'm going to clear that, and I'm going to set my uh, tool orientation up here, and I'm going to grab that. So I'm going to do the same thing for the drill, Control-D, right-click, edit. I'm going to clear my geometry and reset my tool orientation and then grab my geometry. Same thing again for the tap. So right click edit, clear the geometry, grab our uh, tool orientation and then grab that. So we're almost done with this part or at least with the first operation. Um, I like to save a lot so I'll save it. So you might ask, why did I only do that one? And it's because I want to take all of these tool operations, and now I want to, to pattern them around the, around the part. Uh, so I'm going to highlight all of them, and you can go up here to pattern. You can also uh, pattern uh, from this right here. So you right-click on them, make the pattern. I'm going to do a circular pattern from this axis from this axis, and then I'm going to have it do five equally spaced and keep origin, uh, original, sorry. So, uh, sorry, let me close that. Uh, no, sorry about that. Um, so we're going to hit OK. So now we took that one seed and ran it around the part. So we could simulate this, but what's going to happen is it's going to, um, I want to actually control uh, the order of operations. So we can preserve the order, or we can order it by operations, or we can order it by tools. So in this case, what my intention is, is to order by operation. So, and I'll show you what that does during the simulation. So now we're ready to simulate it. We have first first operation done. Of course, we can go in there and chamfer it if we wanted, but uh, I'll spare you that. Um, so I'm going to right-click here, do stock simulation, and I'll get it get it to where I want to see it. I like to turn on stop on clashes, see if I did my job and set everything up right. Uh, check against fixtures, and then I turn off the show hide bodies. Um, so real quick, I'll just buzz through the simulation, see if we have any problems. I'm actually slow it down here while it's working its way around the part. So now you can see it's hitting the corners. And then we'll speed it back up. So it's going to rough these pockets. It'll make a, a rotary move, rough the next one. And it's actually going to do it one more time to do the finish passes. So now it's doing the finish passes, but now it's going to do the spot drills. 
and then it'll finish by rotating up and doing it on top. So now I'll speed it up. So real quickly, there's no clashes. Luckily, uh, we have a first operation done. So uh, with that, what I want to highlight is, um, you know, how easy it was to save these three tool operations to then run it and duplicate it elsewhere. So if you're ever finding, you know, I have a half inch tool that I like to rough and finish with, maybe face with, whatever. Uh, all you got to do is highlight those three operations, right click on them, store as template. It's that easy. We'll do it one more time. So you, you right click and drag over everything. If you wanted to do all these, you would just hover over them, right click, and store as template. So in this case, I realize you know, I really do come down and I face the same way every time. Uh, and then I like to rough with this half inch uh, with this half inch tool. And then usually I'll come in and finish the walls on that same tool. So I'm going to highlight those, right click, store as template. And then this I just call the D1 demo template. So here we can overwrite it. And I actually did that earlier today. You know, it's something I wanted to change the tool. So... Uh, I just overwrote that, replace it, and then now when you want to use it, you just right click in this gray space and create from template. So you have, there's a handful of templates I've already set up, and they're all stored on my C drive. So this is the location that they're stored in. And if you're a shop that has multiple programmers, or especially if you're a shop that has a senior programmer and some junior programmers, this is a really good way to leverage that senior person's knowledge. You know, generally he, he's going he's gonna to know how to spot, drill, drill, and tap a, a perfect way, uh, or at least the majority of the time. He's going he's gonna to know how to do a lot of things that he's going to want to store as a template. So put them on the server and point everybody to that same set of templates. And leverage everybody's uh, everybody's knowledge. So, uh, with that said, if you, I wanted to show something else that I think is cool. So, let's let's use the scenario that we got out to the shop when we realized that yeah, my my stock is actually I think I set this up at four inches in diameter and uh, inch and a half tall. So let's let's say that we actually uh, let's open this part. So I right-clicked on the part, went up to open. So here's our part. What if it was actually um, we can we can we can edit it, the part over here. You know, we can come over here and edit the sketch. So what if this was actually uh, okay? I have it at 4.65. Let's say our stock was actually four inches, right? Um, so by the time we got to the shop, something changed. Our, ch our stock moved from, I had it at 4 and 5 eighths to, um, to 4 inches. So I think the go-to meeting, yeah, there we go. So we come back here and you can see the facing operations and everything that's tied to, to that diameter change. So we can right click, generate tool pass. It's going to ask if we want to do all or, or just the ones that, are, that need to be regenerated. So I hit no. That way it's not regenerating toolpaths that don't need to be regenerated. And if you look at the, the side cuts you know, over here, there's, there's fewer passes. Now we can make that an extreme and, and uh, we, could, we could say go out to uh, six inches, right? So we get out there or for whatever the scenario is, we had a, a six inch stock. Um, get out of that, regenerate that. Or if we uh, probably a probably a better scenario would be that our stock ended up showing up from the from the material company at uh, two inches tall, right? Um, so our stock got taller. Uh, so we just re exit this, regenerate it. So that's why I like to use models as my um, I like to use solids as my um, stock definition. So right here, my, uh, my um, facing, facing operation, now it's taken in a bunch of roughing steps. You know, we can make that six inches tall. And because, you know, you want to talk about efficiency, 
spend some time thinking about how you want to set up your heights and set those as your default. So in my facing, you know, I want to I want to retract above the stock height. I want to feed from uh, the top, but the top I defined as the stock top. You know, usually if I'm making a pocket, I don't want to start at the top of the stock because I probably already got rid of it with the face mill. So if I'm making a pocket, I'll probably do top of model. Um, and if you hover over this, you'll get this this pop up that'll explain what all these are. But your top is where the the cut starts. Your bottom's where the the cut finishes. And on the facing, I did from model top. So my my cut's going to finish at the top of the model. And then my depths of cut, you know, I have set up, um, if we look at the expression, so we're talking about efficiency tools again, make sure you're using expressions because it'll translate through all your tools generally to your intent. So once I got that all set up the way I like it, if I want to face everything from, you know, that way from now on, um, you can uh, make default right here. So if you right click on that face operation, you can come down and make default. And now the next time I do a, a, a facing operation from here, it's going to pull up those same defaults. Uh, that's different from a template. You know, so template, you can do something kind of odd that's a little, little different than your normal defaults and you can leverage them that way. So uh, with that, I mean, kind of ran through it pretty quick. But that's, I think, the, uh, the intention of the, the webinar today is to show you how you can leverage some of these tools. Maybe, maybe I did something that I didn't speak about. So uh, let's open it up for questions and see if anybody has